Welcome to the Whole Career Podcast with Advent Health. I'm Brandon Strawn, and I'm joined by my co-host, Sky Kellogg. Each episode features conversations with various healthcare professionals who will share their personal career journeys, insights, and perspectives on various healthcare careers. From nursing to technology to leadership, we'll cover a wide range of topics to help you stay informed and inspired. Whether you're just starting out in your healthcare career, looking to pivot, or a seasoned professional looking to take the next step, this podcast is for you. We hope to empower you with the knowledge and the tools needed to make a positive impact in your field. At Advent Health, we believe that we are greater as a whole, and we invite you to join us on this journey as we explore the world of healthcare careers together. Welcome. Today we have Demario Tunzil. He is a regional market strategist with Advent Health, and he's here to discuss his career journey uh, with Advent Health. We're honored to have you, Demario. Would you mind just introducing yourself and giving us a brief overview of what your current role is with the company? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sky and Brandon, for this opportunity. I'm Demario Tonso. I'm the regional market strategy leader for the West Florida Division. So I'm behind all things strategy regarding campaigns, regarding marketing, uh, partnering with our teams to do any digital ads. So pretty much to kind of help build that attraction and consideration for Advent Health. That's awesome. That's so really quickly, when you say attraction and consideration, can you just break down what what that means and, and what your part, you like your role uh, has to do with that? Yeah, so pretty much uh, I'm, I'm involved with more so the passive candidates or candidates who may currently be employed, uh, but who can be persuaded away or, or pulled away from their current employer. So giving them the opportunity to see Advent Health, giving them an opportunity to explore our benefits, to consider Advent Health is is what I'm solely behind and, and letting them know that we are an employer of choice. We are an employer who sees the whole you and just bringing them to join the Advent Health family. So just, just building that attraction, which results into the consideration, which hopefully results into um, the positions being filled. Thank you so much, Demario. And Brandon and I obviously have the pleasure of knowing you prior to recording this podcast yeah. and known you for quite some time now. And we know a little bit about your career journey, and that's really why we wanted to have you on the podcast today to talk about you know, what, what that journey looks like for you. And, um, you know, we have your backstory a little bit, um, starting as a teacher, right. And now as a strategist. So do you mind just giving us, um, an overview of, you know, where you started in your teaching career and then how you ended up being a regional market strategist for Advent Health? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I started in my teaching career. Um, I, I went to Bethune Cookman university and I received my undergraduate uh, degree in educational studies or elementary education. And um, I graduated with my undergraduate degree back in 2012. And so immediately I was blessed with an opportunity to start teaching. And I started teaching the grade uh, grade six. So I taught at a K through six school and I taught science for uh, sixth graders. And I was able to do that for about two and a half years before transitioning to language arts. So still being able to be involved with kids, but just on another subject before um, transitioning over to the HR realm. Um, I enjoy teaching. I, I enjoy inspiring. So I, when I had the opportunity to transition to HR, I wasn't necessarily able to teach per se, but I was still able to inspire and help individuals with jobs and careers. So when I transitioned over to HR, I started off as an onboarding specialist or a processing specialist. And I started building my relationships with individuals who were working in other areas to, to try to grow my career within, within the scope of HR. So after processing, I became a recruiter assistant. After a recruiter assistant, I became a sourcer, uh, being able to be the head hunter for the organization before being promoted to the sourcing supervisor. So having that opportunity to work as a supervisor and still being able to inspire not necessarily children, but I was able to inspire adults with something that was still, you know, fulfilling to me and for me. Um, at the sourcing supervisor, I was blessed with the opportunity to be an, an associate HR business partner for one of our locations uh, before transitioning back to the corporate space to be on the uh, COE or talent management side regarding strategies. So I was pretty, uh, had an opportunity to, to see a lot of areas when it came to talent acquisition from processing to recruiting to strategy to sourcing i was able to experience each of those areas and, and it was a beautiful and a unique experience for me thank you so much for sharing that and i love that 
you were able to find the connection between what most would see as two mm-hmm. vastly different careers, but you still have the same mission and goal for yourself in mind to inspire others. And I think it's good for anyone who's listening to this, right, to remember that if, if you're looking for a career change or you're thinking about one, like knowing that whatever you love about what you're doing right now can transfer into something else and, you know, set you above the rest because of that. So thank you for sharing that, Mario. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I, and I wanted to just ask, was there a certain situation that caused you to pivot from teaching to because you said opportunity? What was if you speak towards what that opportunity may have been as to why you made that transition from teaching to, you know, the onboarding and pre, pre-boarding into HR? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing about teaching, it is a very uh, rewarding career. So I respect teachers. Um Anybody who, who's an educator, especially throughout COVID, um, they have my, my utmost respect. Um, but there's another side of teaching um, that, that played on my health. And what I'm saying is uh, high blood pressure, right? So <laughs> to be fully transparent, um, I noticed that when I was, was an educator that there were certain days when I would be teaching and where I was experiencing uh, high blood pressure or hypertension and so in the long run, with me being uh, fairly new in my career, I, I enjoyed it, but I wanted to do something that wouldn't necessarily have a, a negative impact on my uh, overall health. Um, so, so then I kind of decided to explore other opportunities um, regarding, you know, still being able, like we said earlier, still being able to inspire, still being able to help individuals, still being able to encourage individuals. And so HR gave me an opportunity to still work with the human aspect of people. And one one thing I loved about the transition from teaching to HR is with my first HR role being processing, just to see that, you know, just to show that, see that person being excited about starting their job or getting information about their pay, getting information about their first day was rewarding to me. Um, So I was still able to have that not necessarily miss, uh, you know, the piece of not being able to connect um, with inspiring, but still being able to inspire people in a different way. And so what I loved about HR is that, um, you know, again, we have a lot of nuances, but we are making a difference, right? You know, believe it or not, we are making a, a huge impact and a difference on everybody that we encounter with all the events and everything that we're doing, we're making a difference. And so, uh, that's what kind of made me decide to pivot. It wasn't necessarily a professional decision. It was more so a personal um, decision regarding my overall health um, and still being able to want to work with people directly. So that that kind of uh, caused me to pivot and look more for uh, other professions. Um, but I still appreciate I you miss, sharing that. Yeah, yeah. I do miss uh, the kids, though. I miss the children working with the kids. Um, so. And Demario, if we can talk a little bit more about your your role as a regional market strategist, right? I think a lot of roles within HR have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of diff- there's just so many routes you can take right within HR. And, and when people hear your title, they probably have maybe never heard of it before. Right. I'm not sure mm-hmm. I had before coming into HR either. So could you give an example of just what, you know, what it means to be a regional market strategist and then what some of those day to day tasks may look like just to kind of paint the picture? Um, I, I know every day is probably a little different, but just some yeah. high level <laughs> overviews right, of, of what that looks like to be in that role. So those listening yeah. can get a better understanding. Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. Our role entails a lot. Um, some of the key factors. Uh, that we 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 pretty much execute for the organization is we have to be able to see needs before our organization en- encounters those needs. So we have to be able to forecast certain uh, certain opportunities for the organization and being able to combat the challenges that the organization may not be experiencing currently. So a lot of my day to day, I will be reviewing data. I will be uh, collecting data from different markets, maybe from up north, maybe from Midwest, to see what the pay ranges are, um, to see what the sign on bonuses may be. And bringing that back to my team and saying, this is what Colorado is paying their nurses. We We possibly can be able to match that 
and persuade them to move to Florida if we do X, Y, Z. So reviewing data and not only reviewing data, but taking it a step further to brainstorm campaigns to attract maybe a Colorado, I'm just using that as an example, or right, maybe right. Minnesota or maybe Georgia. What are we seeing in the market to make to kind of persuade these individuals to want to move to Florida? Um, so just being able to work with you, with, with you two and um, our campaign team, our digital team on certain social ads that we may need to put out and pulling the certain data on what areas we need to target with those social ads. So, for example, I mean, I'm going to use Zephyr Hills Day City just for an example, because this was a recent experience. I noticed that a lot of our talent is coming from Lakeland, Florida when it comes to working at Zephyr Hills or that facility or that location. Right. So an initiative that I stood up was when we promote the upcoming hiring events or when we promote upcoming open houses or whatever it may be, we need to target Lakeland, Florida. Why? It's because the data that we're receiving, we're seeing that a lot of our talent is coming from that area. So let's constantly push out our information for Zephyr Hills to Lakeland to bring more talent. So sitting back, collecting data, not only collecting data, but evaluating that data and finding the best possible way to execute, to yield more talent, to yield more attraction or consideration like we stated earlier. So that's kind of like a high level, uh, <laughs> a high level expression on what it is to, to be a regional market strategist, but pretty much whatever we're able to do, whatever we're able to stand up, whatever, whatever we're able to launch, to to yield more attraction that's my scope and and that's what i thrive in so i definitely enjoy it yeah no we we appreciate you answer that and and so just to kind of break that down a little bit further uh, damar you did an awesome job of of just um explaining that so some of the data that you know demario may even be working with may be data that's right you know within admin health, right? So he he mentioned he can go outside externally, right? But then of course, I'm assuming that you all are tracking it when you bring up onboarding, you know, okay, well, we know that people are coming to us from Lakeland because we see what city they, they list when they put yeah. where, you know, where they live, you know, or where they're from. So that, that's information that's right in house, um, as well as, you know, going to different expos and finding out where someone may be traveling from. So that's just, you know, I wouldn't say a, lo a low level, but just going a little bit deeper into an explanation as to, you know, what, what DeMario's job entails. Um, yeah. And so, would you say that being in this position, you know, you have to be competitive somewhat or, you know, I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming that's a prerequisite. But um, <laughs> but do you think that there is you know, this is a position for someone who um, is, you know, really driven and maybe uh, not really sales, but just competitive, competitive when it comes to, yeah. you know, the organization? Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is a position where you have to be a self-starter, right? You you have to be the, the individual that there are times where you have to go out and you have to find the data because the data isn't necessarily coming to you. So there are times where we have to go out and we have to research. We have to uh, see what other organizations are doing that may be working that we can possibly adapt uh, or adopt or vice versa. Um, and so it's a lot of times where if, you, if a, faci a facility is having a dire need um, regarding CT text, I'm using that. That is a very hot, hot topic right now. Um, what is Baycare doing to retain their CT text or what are they doing to attract those CT texts? And so kind of reviewing that data, seeing what may be working and kind of modifying it to fit the Advent Health approach. And um, so it's, it's more so of a self-starter, a self-motivator, an individual who doesn't mind, uh, you know, trial and error because it is a lot of trial and error uh, with this role as well. But understanding that, hey, you're going to have times where, where, you know, some of the data or research may not be um, what we desire to see. But if, if that's the case, what are we doing to combat that? What are we doing to meet that challenge where it is and still fill our facilities? So it's a lot, of, a lot that goes into it. But that's more so of an example, just being a self-motivator, a self-starter, and continuing to build that pipeline, continuing to build that attraction, that consideration for having help. And your role, I should say, Demario, in the West is really vital to 
just keeping oh. everyone on track, right? You are the the lead in regards to communication of what's coming down the pipe and, and what uh, us as a strategy team are working on. Um, so there's a lot of information, right, that you have to track to, to prove what you're doing is is working. So how do you track that information and what sort of information should I say is actually tracked that you present back to your region to show um, that your, your methods of research and uh, the time that you take to figure out what is coming down the road, how does that, you know, how does that transfer to them? How do you get them to understand the work that you're doing and how it's working? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I actually have two examples, but the first example I will use is, is just pretty much from the expo that we were able to uh, stand up in the West Florida division a couple of months ago. So June, 2023. And what I was able to communicate to the leadership team is here's what we're putting out into the market right so i was able to show them the digital assets that that were created for the expo i was able to show them the talent network forms that were created for the expo and sh to show them what we're doing to attract these candidates and to consider advent health and so with that being stated our great campaign team was able to set up a campaign and for me to see the results from the expo um, just for example, <clears throat> I connected with our campaign strategist and we reviewed the results after the expo and we were able to see that north of 300 people apply to our opportunities just because of the expo, expo advertising. So that's some of the data that I'm able to kind of take back to the West Florida division team and say, here, here is the campaign that we executed, Google AdWords, Spotify, Streams traditional radio ads to yield 300 plus applications for the West Florida Division Career Expo. So that's, I, I like to show them kind of the beginning to the end. Here's what we're doing in your market. Here are the results that we're able to yield from that, that approach. Um, and then as well as a cath lab campaign that uh, we uh, just recently uh, finalized back in July actually we were able to yield a total of, I believe, 89 applications from our Google ads or admin health banners attracting calf lab text. So taking that information, showing them, giving them visuals of what we're putting out into the market based on this visual, based on the clicks, here are the applies we were able to receive from this campaign or this targeted ad. No, that's that's amazing. I just think, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, these ads just show up and they're just yeah. there. But there's rhyme, there's reasons, there's methods to all of this. Um, and the people who do all of that and come up with these brilliant ideas are none other but your, yourself and your team. So it's it's amazing because even as a kid, right, I can remember I'm like seeing billboards or if you're in an airport and you're walking down and you're seeing Advent Health or whatever, I'm like, now I see it because I work for the company, right? But when I, I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't really understanding. I'm like, man, this is, they're just everywhere, right? But there right, is right. a purpose behind it, you know? And now mm -hmm. I get to see that, right? Because I'm a part of the, the strategy team. But but that's awesome. That's that's amazing. I wanted to, to ask you, like, what are some ways, right, for someone who's in your position as a regional market strategist, how do you stay up to, how do you stay up to date on certain trends and, and different things that, you know, market strategists just should, you know, just should be aware of? Or is there any, you know, newsletters that you're reading or, you know, things like that? Great question. Uh, Be uh, Becker's report is a report that that I, I leverage to see the latest, whether it's in the healthcare system or or other realms in the prof in other realms uh, of, of professionalism. So Becker's report is something that I leverage. Uh, we use a tool called Light Lightcast. So this is a very intuitive tool. Um, this, this tool it includes a lot of invaluable information uh, that we're able to pull and present to leaders. So in Lightcast, for example, I can pull something as broad as an occupational snapshot. And what this occupational snapshot provides me is the supply and demand for the position that I'm seeking. It provides me the, the pay rates for the position that I'm seeking. It provides me with the schools within that location for the position that I'm researching. So Lightcast is a very, very uh, beneficial tool that we use to kind of help us tell the story. Um, we're able to, to, to pull heat maps 
in light cast. So for example, I pulled a heat map recently where I was able to see that there are more nurses in Minnesota than there are jobs. So if there are more nurses in Minnesota than there are jobs, we That's should rare. Execute. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should, what should we do? We should execute a campaign, right? A move to Florida campaign or life is better in Florida, whatever it may be, because we're seeing that there are more nurses than there are jobs in this um, in Minnesota. Um, so that's just an example of how we're kind of able to to try to stay proactive and stay ahead of the head of the, the game. Um, and and just to kind of follow up on that too, are there strategies if if you can share any with with us and, and the listeners today? Are there strategies in place that are unique to us right now in the West Florida region that none of our competitors are doing, or or if there are not, like are there some uh, strategies in place that are the same as the competition and, and are more fruitful because we're doing it a little bit differently. Yeah. So I know a very unique strategy that, that our beautiful brand team was actually able to stand up is, uh, just, just seeing the whole you or seeing the heart. So we're right now, we're currently standing up that strategy as an employer brand strategy or employer brand campaign, where we're promoting that we, we don't only care for you as a professional, but we care for you regarding your personal space as well. So I do know currently that we are promoting in the West Florida division, a holistic approach to the, to the candidates. Um, and with that being stated, we're promoting the benefits that we're offering, which we know other companies are doing, but we're kind of taking it a step further to kind of show them that when you come to work, you're not just viewed as an employee, but you're, you're viewed as family. Um, so that's a strategy that we're currently standing up in the West Florida uh, division. I can say that we kind of led the way with expos happening in uh, the West Florida division. Just for example, to be fully transparent, the recent expo we held in June, we found out, I believe, Tampa General held an expo at the same location. But it was more so of because we Advent Health is uh, currently holding massive expos within the, the uh, Tampa region or the West Florida division. Mm -hmm. So those are certain strategies that we're standing up and that we, we pioneered some and we see that other hospitals are following as well. And then even vice versa. We, 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 we do take ideas or we look at ideas and strategies that other healthcare systems are doing and we kind of modify it to fit our approach. Um, so we're continuing to to try to, to try, you know continue to generate more and more strategies or separate ourselves. Uh, but those are just a couple, just to name on what we're currently executing in the West Florida division. Yeah, no, you you all are you all are doing amazing amazing work, and I I wanted to know, right? And, and I think at this point, you know, our listeners fully understand, you know, what your what your role is and what you're doing. So I wanted to take it back a little bit. In your journey, or I guess as you ascended from, you know, the onboarding part of it and then going into H, uh, assist, Associate HRBP, talk to us about kind of how that how that ascension helped you in the role that you are right now. Like maybe the things that you yes. learned from each position that you took with you that you think, you know, benefit you now in your role. Absolutely. I, I believe the, the most beneficial uh aspect when it comes to to being an associate HR business partner is that actually working at the facility, it gave me an opportunity to to learn what the leaders are seeking or what they want to hear. So there are a lot of times and we hold monthly optimization meetings or we hold quarterly business reviews with our locations and me having the background or the perspective of being in that position prior, understanding when I was in that position, what did I want to hear? We want to, who's walking in the door? Um, what strategies are we standing up? Are we yielding any hires from those strategies? So positioning my presentations or positioning my, my, my communication to be in the scope of what I would want to hear. And I believe that is extremely beneficial uh, for me and what, what I stated earlier just having a unique um a unique progression to this opportunity I'm in now because it absolutely I, I'm able to, to speak their language 
I'm able to speak their language and whatever challenges they present, I'm able to confidently state what we're able to do to combat those challenges. Not saying every not saying every strategy is going to fill every single need, but at least we're trying our best to to mitigate this challenge for you or to to mitigate these open roles roles for you. So kind of learning their language and, and just leveraging that experience to, to help me where I am currently. Uh, that that was huge for me. Yeah. And, and Demar, obviously you're, you know, being a leader and, and, and being able to connect with other leaders at facilities sets you apart, right, in, in your role currently and, and other people listening to this conversation with you right now. Um, some of them may want to be a leader within a healthcare system like Advent Health. So how can you best prepare someone uh, to map out their career plan to be similar to yours? Obviously, everyone has mm -hmm. different journeys, but if, if they're inspired by yours and would like to take your route, what's what's the advice that you would have for them? The biggest advice that, that I will have is, is find a trusted advisor or mentor who, who truly will take the time to invest in you and who, who wouldn't necessarily be apprehensive or, or afraid to, to, to see your opportunities and speak to your opportunities to help you improve your professional journey. So first and you know, primarily, I would say find a, a, an effective mentor um, someone who you view, who you admire, their journey, who you respect and connect with them maybe on a monthly cadence, bi-weekly cadence or whatever it may be. But I believe that will be a phenomenal first step for anyone who is seeking upward mobility. Um, just finding a trusted advisor or a mentor who can help you improve, uh, strengthen, strengthen whatever your opportunities may be and somebody that you trust. Um, <laughs> you got to have somebody that you trust and who you know who's truly investing in you. Yeah, and and we get this when we ask that question, we get that response. That's like one of the most used responses, which is awesome. And I always follow it up with did you yourself find this seek this person out or did this mentor kind of uh reach out to you? I I I, I seek the person out. Um okay. okay, yeah. Yeah, I seek the person out and and the person wasn't necessarily in in um any other roles that I pursued, the person was in a, in, in a com completely different role, but just seeing how he operated, seeing his professional professionalism, I wanted to learn. I wanted to, to, to see what he was able to do to get to where he was. And so I seeked him out and I was the one who scheduled the meetings with him. I was the one who kind of brought the agenda to the meeting for us yeah. to talk through. I was the one who was uh, vulnerable to express Hey, I, I, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. Are there, do you have any techniques or strategies to help me improve in this area? So, so I believe you have to be, you know, you have to be the one to kind of go out, sit back and observe whoever you, you know, we all have somebody we admire and, and, and have been health and finding that person or even, it doesn't even necessarily have to be within the organization. It can be external as well, but finding someone who truly will invest in you um, and someone who you feel comfortable uh, being open with whether it's professional or again whole, holistic care or personal, and this 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 individual was that type of person for me. Um, so it, it, it was a huge asset for my for my career and a huge benefit for me to help me develop. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you for sharing that. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. And I will give a shout out in this moment to Demario because Demario actually <laughs> oh, <yeah>. met with me <laughs> met with me a couple years ago when I was interested in pursuing. Uh, yeah. the associate HRBP role. And I think yeah. it's just a good reminder. And I think back to that situation and I see obviously how much you've grown and learned and mm -hmm. the leader that you are to uh, even someone like me, right? Who doesn't report to you, but I see the way that you speak to others and the way that you present yourself. And like you said, those are the things that you, you really want to see in yeah. a leader and in especially a mentor that that you um you know you want to relate and hopefully see yourself in them at some point but just reaching out like you said can be a hard step but um obviously it was very easy to do so with with you but just an encouragement to those listening to make sure that if you have that inkling that you want to meet with someone or just learn more about their career we hope this podcast help you know helps you learn that and see things that you 
uh, wouldn't see otherwise and, and learn things you wouldn't learn otherwise. But again, just taking that first step is is really important. So thank you for, for sharing that, Demario. And um, obviously you have natural leadership abilities, right? But what <laughs> training opportunities have you taken advantage of during your time at Advent Health to really grow uh, your your leadership abilities? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there are a couple of platforms that I that I used. Uh, one was, of course, ALN. That's our internal platform. But if you're if you're listening, then you're not necessarily within the organization. Uh, LinkedIn Learning, LinkedIn Learning uh, was was a huge huge asset for me. It definitely helped me on, on various levels, uh, whether it was topics about fostering communication. I was able to send in on trainings on that, being able to have you know augment your EQ. So understanding how people are feeling, being able to read the room <laughs> yeah. is very important. Um, uh, those type of trainings, teamwork, collaboration. So, and, and I believe some of those trainings are, are what will help individuals propel in their career because you're gonna always need to have positive communication. You're gonna always need to have an effective collaboration, like regardless in all we do, whether it's professional, whether it's personal, you're going to need those qualities in order to be successful. Um, you could communicate, but if it's not effective communication, that can hinder a lot. So yeah. learning how to effectively communicate and meet people where they are, it, it was huge for me. And that really helped me when I was a leader because I had a team of, of 10 individuals reporting to me when I was a sourcing supervisor and I had to meet them where they were. I could not communicate the same way to one person and then take that to the other person. One size does not fit all. And I, and I believe once leaders learned that, um, that it definitely helped them become more effective leaders as, as well. Oh, that's that's awesome. And I like you said, I know you, you plugged the ALN, you know, the, the but I also <laughs> want to let you know, Please take advantage of that. If you're a current Advent Health employee, right, there's a ton of opportunity for continued learning. Um, there's, uh, you know, we have a leadership institute um, as well. And so their sole job is to uh, create, ident identify, create, and grow leaders within Advent Health. And so, um, you know, th their purpose uh, is to make sure that if you want to be a leader within Advent Health, that you, mm -hmm. you know, have the opportunity to speak with someone who understands how to do that. Um, and then, of course, have the leadership development um, uh, ability to host, you know, that and, and hopefully, you know, develop your talent. So, but I wanted, I wanted to ask you, what is your, what are you most proud of being in this role, like, what are you most proud of uh, that you've accomplished so far? Wow. That's a great question. A lot, right? Um, what I'm most proud of is, is some establishing some of the relationships or rapports that I've established uh, since I've been in this role, not only with our internal strategy team, but with our stakeholders at each of the facilities. And, and something that I really enjoy about this role is actually seeing the work that we do behind the scenes being pushed out into the market so for example with with the expo that we had a couple of months ago being able to work on the the the, the float that was uh on a boat promoting the expo being able to actually see that in tampa florida and seeing everybody you know, pointing at the float and career expo at been held Raymond James Stadium. That was huge to me because we were behind the scenes and we were actually able to see that being executed and pushed out into the market. And I, I was floored just to see that. And then even driving in Tampa and hearing our radio ads, being able to to approve the radio ads or say, hey, can we add this or can we remove this? It, it, it's, it's just amazing to me. And um, it shows me that our work, <laughs> the work that we're doing behind the scenes is, is, is not in vain and that a lot of people are hearing the output, but I'm seeing both sides. And I just think that I, I feel that is such an amazing experience just to see our work actually come to life in the market. 
No, that's that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, because I think oftentimes a, a lot of people, you know, especially in the corporate world, right, we're, we're numbers driven, we're like results driven. But for you to say, like seeing the work, actually like doing the work um, and, yes. and being in the background, right, like not bringing up all these different KPIs and stuff like that, which are important, <laughs> but like you know, your, your response was, was awesome in that you see it a little bit differently at times. Mm -hmm. Um, and that sometimes just doing the work and seeing the work, um, is, is enough, you know, as, as far as your accomplishment. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. 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 And I'm, and I'm thinking about it on all levels, right. I'm thinking about because that work that we're seeing is all of us coming together, whether it's, we're coming together with our campaign team, whether we're coming together with our digital team, whether we're coming together with our branding team, seeing every seeing all of us come together to push that out is just like we said earlier collaboration we talk about teamwork fostering positive communication all of those you, you have to ensure that all of those are being executed effectively in order for your work to come to fruition in the market so it's just and i know it's not just me behind the scenes working on that but it's it's just our teamwork that we have um to you know just help it come to life for our markets yeah, and you, you bring up a good point, Jamaro, because our team, for those that are not familiar with it, is is structured. Like you said, we're all reliant on one another. Nothing can really be done unless someone else gets another task before it done, right? So how do you deal with that that stress of knowing uh, that, that a lot of your work relies on a lot of other people holding up their end of, of the deal, if you will, right? And, and, and getting their work done so that way you can relate relay that to the market how do you deal with that stress or if there is any stress for you and and how um how do you ensure that you know the work is properly reflected back since a lot of the work is you know some of it's out of the the realm of what you would normally do you're you know talking about advertising and and billboards and things like i know that's that's a little bit out of what regional market strategists they physically do but they have to relay that information back if that makes yeah. sense so how do you how do you balance all of that and that's a great question. And it kind of ties into what we stated earlier regarding um, um, teamwork. So one one of uh, the character traits that I possess that I'm pretty, pretty proud of is connectedness. And me being able to establish pretty robust rapports or relationships with my colleagues, I, I entrust in them that they're going to get the job done. Um, so when I pass on a task or submit a request through our platforms, I'm rest assured knowing that the colleague or my team member is going to get it done because based on the relationship, the teamwork, the collaboration that we already established. And um, it goes back to those trainings that I mentioned earlier, fostering positive communication, building effective collaboration. Once you have the foundation of those, you, it's, you, you can rest assured that any individual that you work with is going to do their part for you. Um, so I, I never submit a request and have any type of anxiety or any type of stress because based on the relationship that's already established, I trust them wholeheartedly knowing that the job will get done. And um, even if it's not timely, I understand that I'm able to circle back and, and, and speak out of, hey, we need this. How soon do you think we can we can have it? And knowing that, you know, feathers aren't going to be ruffled because of the relationship that's already established. Um, so no stress at all when I pass on a task or no concern at all, because um, just just with my experience so far, it's been amazing, amazing teamwork and things have been getting done um, sometimes at a pretty expedited um, an expedited time frame. No, that's 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 amazing. We appreciate you uh, sharing everything you have with us so far today. We wanted to know if you're comfortable, if you would be open to a rapid fire question session. We'll do a couple of questions here. Uh, are, are you open to rapid fire? Yeah, 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 man. I'm open. I'm open. All right. All right. Cool. Sky, do you want to kick us off? Yes. Demario, what was your very first job? My very first job was at a. Oh goodness. My very first job was Papa John's. Papa John's, coffee or tea? Coffee. Mm. Favorite book or movie? Dr. Seuss. No, I'm joking. I was like, well, he was a teacher. So. Now my, 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 my favorite my favorite movie is uh it's a movie called Five Heartbeats. 
it's a, a it's, it's a, a movie about singing and, and guys getting together doing music i love music uh so that that is my favorite movie i was actually able blessed i was blessed to grow up with that um on that movie so that that is my favorite movie of all time five heart beats and as far as my favorite book it, it's more so on a personal um scope it's a it's a book titled the five love languages yeah. and so it kind of helps you it just kind of helps you learn your significant other but very very amazing book awesome. and demario can we do a plug here because i uh, this right. isn't rapid fire i'm sorry brandon i'm, I'm completely breaking script here <laughs> no, that's but okay. demario just mentioned a movie about singing and i just i demario you have to share with our listeners um what what you do in your free time what is <laughs> how that relates oh, yeah. to singing because <laughs> i think yeah. this is a really interesting fact that other people may not know about you oh yeah absolutely so I, 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 in my free time, there are times where I travel uh, with, with my, some of my brothers uh, and, we, and we do music. Uh, we do uh, some gospel music. We do some R&B music um, and we go to different churches or different events, whether it's a, it's a wedding or a program, funerals, unfortunately. And, and we just use our voices to to kind of help bless someone or get someone through some difficult times or we use our voices to to bring joy right to have a good time so that, that that's what i do in my free time i write i write and do music that's awesome that's Thank awesome you I'm, that. I'm glad i'm glad you brought that out shout out to demario just blessing people Brent, and brandon you as well man. yeah you yeah as well, I mean, you know yeah. Listen, man, we're here to interview you, man. We're here, we're here to share you <laughs> with with Advent Health and the world. Um, yeah. But no, that's 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 cool. And so I, I know we we kind of already broke rapid fire, but I wanted to ask you, how does you know Advent Health the the work life balance? Like you mentioned that these are the things that you're doing your free time, you know, and and then you also mentioned about you know of course w the the toll that teaching had had taken on you and and, and that period of your life. What is the change? Like, what are some things that Advent Health is doing well that help contribute to, you know, your work life balance right now? Yeah. So one is just the flexibility, right, of, of being able to work remote and uh, having that hybrid schedule to go into go into the office when needed. Um, like I said, I commend teachers. I, I really respect teachers because, you know, whether you're feeling well or not, you need to go into that classroom. And you have to be the best you every single day for the students. Um, but Advent Health, they do a great job of having that work-life balance. And I believe a leader is huge. And my current leader, she's, I mean, extremely supportive. Um, nothing but great things to say about her. Shout out, shout out to Elizabeth Perez. Um, but she, 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 she's able to, she's very understanding on a professional level and personal level. And, and I believe that goes beyond all you can ask uh, from a leader, um, true example of a holistic leader. Um, so th I mean, that I believe your leader plays a huge role um, in that as well. Just just helping and understanding the work life balance that is needed, especially in today's climate. Right. There's a lot of change <laughs> in today's climate. Um, so th that, that's I mean, it allows you to do what you may need to do. What brings you joy. Um, and, and that's something that, that brings me joy. So. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And, and overall, Demario, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I know we both have, and I, I just want to see um, if we can ask one final question of you. And, and what is it that you want other people to take away from this conversation? You know, when they listen to it, what do you hope that they they leave with? Yes, yeah, so so I hope that they leave with uh, understanding. Hey, we may be a, a successful and an established and great organization, but you know, we're human, too. Uh, we, we've had experiences that uh, led us to where we are. Um, understanding that, um, you know, just because you start somewhere doesn't mean that's where you, you need to finish. Right. Understanding that there are endless opportunities, endless opportunities and, and connecting with the right people is huge. Connecting with the right people who truly invest in you. It's huge. And then you return in that favor when your time comes. Uh, I believe that's what I want. Want, to, want people to take from this. Continue to inspire one another. Continue to encourage one another. Most of all, continue to love one another. Um, that's that's my message today. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Whole Career Podcast. 
Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform to stay up to date with the latest episodes. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out to us on our Instagram at Life at Advent Health. Until next time, take care.